Hello and welcome to my channel. As you can see, I start printing not only paper and I also get involved in the 3D printing. As I mentioned before, it's only for prototyping and building small stuff for my darkroom. It's quite a steep learning curve, but I'm actually getting there. But let's start with a discussion of my color analyzer. In the last video, I make progress to make initial measurement with the counts directly from ADC on this sensor with a small Arduino. And the first problem was actually intensity of the light, so I just decided to move it a little bit closer to the lens. And in this case, I will have much higher amount of counts, so intensity of the light is a square drop from the distance. And based on my research, actually some of the color analyzers works exactly like this. So you connect them to this rod and you flip them inside and you can basically measure color balance from there. So it's a good idea because it will be more precise and especially you can see how much brighter this spot is and probably you just don't need a huge diffuser, you just need a small diffuser on top of the lens. First of all, I probably want to switch the platform from Arduino to something modern and more reasonable for my application. And secondly, I'm losing touch with the C completely and last time when I used anything with the Arduino and C it was crazy long time ago, probably 5 or 6 years ago. And I think for my application to get things done dirty and quick it's a little bit overkill. So as you remember, I start with the writing the first initial program and from there I start to make some first tests and first plots. I post this to plot and in the comments on my channel I get that line is not linear and you actually totally correct, the line completely not linear. This is actually semi-exponential and looks a little bit strange line. And the second line, this is a line is actually crosstalk from magenta. So I set up for 60-60-0 and I ch start to change yellow channel. And this is a response on a yellow channel on a 445 nanometers. And this is actually stable 60 points. So as you can see, it's here in a cross section. And I only change magenta filter. So it's basically crosstalk between both of the channels. And the second plot is exactly the same, so it's a crosstalk, but here I change actually magenta channel, and on the magenta channel I change yellow channel. And as you can see, this is a perfect plot, I have zero crosstalk and it's flat line, so I can separate completely magenta channel from the yellow. But yellow from magenta, this is actually the problem. So I try to fix the response on the plots and adjusting sensitivity of the sensor and to adjust it I have uh, several options. The first option is actually quite simple, it's adjusting gain, so it's a multiplier of gain or ADC. And because our light intensity is crazy slow, I anyway use the maximum one. But I also can adjust the time. To produce this plot I write the small script which is making actually the same amount of counts on ADC, so I always have kind of a linear response on ADC based on the different times. So the time is of each point is different accumulation, but you can say it's kind of the same response uh, in electrical way. So here you can see the first channel, which is yellow channel, and we also have exactly the same amount of crosstalk, but now it's actually in absolute intensity values because I'm changing the time. So it's corrected to the time and to the gain setting. And here on magenta channel we don't really have crosstalk, so it's more or less the same result. And it was exactly the same response if you look separately on these two plots. So it resembles the same response in direct counts and the line itself also not linear. And also here I have some problems with the magenta, so it's actually doesn't really change at all between 0 and 20. And probably you will see it's why in a next short video, which I will put later, uh, which show you how the filters itself work in enlarger. So if you take a look on a plot and I make a crosstalk plot, so on a values, so it's all yellow values, so I flip between the 0 and 120, and in the same time I measure this curve on the different settings of the magenta filter. As you can see it's actually perfectly moving up and down, so it means we firstly need to measure magenta or probably red channel, and after that you can say if it's actually a different value on the yellow channel. So if you take a look on this footage you have a wheels inside the enlarger and if you rotate the wheel you have a pusher 
which is actually not really symmetrical and it's kind of a strange weird spiral type of thing. So it means it feeds the filters inside the heads not linearly and it's the same not linearly for all the channels. And we also can start discussion how it will actually change over the time of the use of the enlarger. So this is my small update on the technical side, so let's go to the printing. And I think this is one of the problems what I'm trying to solve here. If you think about the time and amount of materials which you actually spend to make a test print, and to most of these test prints it's actually complete waste, because you're just guessing from the beginning, and if you have not a lot of experience, I think it's actually created a lot of problems with the learning curve. For example, now if I know my material and if I develop it, I probably know what is my settings and I can guess exposure by just taking a look on the table in the total darkness and just relatively to my safe light I can say yes, okay, this will be f11 or something like this and from there I can guess my exposure. At least I can guess the range of exposure, but for example, this negative was developed in Germany in Mindfilm Lab, which I don't really like. Maybe they changed, but it was a long time ago. And as you will see in the settings and how the film is actually prints, it's far off from stability and it's far off from the good colors on the negative itself. So the people with the scanning and just digital delivery, they most of the time don't really produce the good result and good negative for the printing. They drop a lot of filters because 99.9% .9 of the people actually care not about the negative, they care about the final result, which they put on the Instagram. And for me, this is a major problem all the time, because I want to produce the good negative, because I store it for basically, actually forever. And if you think about you as an artist, these negatives and your shots will probably feed you and your family in a long period of time, at least this is what the people do in the past. This material never go off from your collection and you can reprint and resell the photos from that. So in my idea to make everything more stable and everything more reasonable to reprint, restore and actually reprint it after the long period of time. So I want a repeatable result. So it means if I have a different enlargers or I have a different photos from the different labs, I want to have a color calibrator which will save my time to have initial print from which I can start and do some magic in the darkroom. As you probably noticed from my videos, most of the time and most of the prints what you make in the darkroom, this is not the final print. It's a different test prints, different kind of expression of the print, different crops and I want to spend more time in the cropping differently and I want to spend more time in the adjustments of the final print, make layers, maybe correction masks and so on. And if your color calibrator is precise, you can actually calibrate it to your own color taste. It means how warm is your pictures and actually what is your color balance, how much exposure you prefer in your pictures. Somebody preferred light, somebody preferred dark. And this is actually quite important to develop your taste and make a stable taste. This is why I usually not advise people to change the film stock and skip around and make different pictures on a different film stock. It's much better to just craft one film and usually this film should be kind of a unique taste and you will probably know how it works. For example, for me it's a Kodak Gold 200 film and I really like this film. Over the years I know how to develop it, I know how to push it, I know which result it will produce, in which situation it will work best and in which it works. And I think this is, resembles a little bit the pure art, for example, paintings. First of all, the type of paint and type of brush probably bends your art, how you can create stuff. And in the same time, you as artists push the boundaries of the material to the limits. And this is extremely important how you make notes. For example, recently I noticed I kind of have a little bit of messy journaling for my darkroom prints and I don't really have full option to go back 
and see all the settings and because it's actually open framework. It's just empty list of paper without anything and in the same time I need a store, physical prints and physical product. So I'm thinking to actually digitize everything and make some notes in a digital way. But in the same time I have a second option and opinion to make a special darkroom book. If you have exactly the same problems what I have in a darkroom or if you completely don't make any notes in darkroom. Put it in the comment below and I will also make some questionnaire in our community posts. So for example for this print I already make two test strips. And the first test strip was underexposed and it was F16 so I switched to F11 and make a 3 second step. But now I also see some strange color cast and I forget to switch off the power on my light which I use in a darkroom to film actually these videos. So it means my darkroom became it's not really a darkroom anymore and I have too much influence from the surrounding. And in the same time, this room became a little bit small, but I don't want to move anything from this room because first of all, I need a dark room. And secondly, I need a room with the noise cancelling because now I run the 3D printer there. And in the same time, this is a really good combination because I have blocking thing under the door and it's completely silent in this room if you close the door. So let's check the bigger test strip and I hope I'm close enough with the color and at least I get an exposure. So I think the exposure looks good but I have a little bit of green tilt on my color and I think I need to check it and just make one more test print only on magenta channel in the negative direction. And because it's a small shift I just will make five point steps and only in the negative direction so it will be more precise and also it probably will be interesting for you because usually I make a 10 point steps and not 5 point steps and this is how the test print looks like and as you remember from our calibration plus what I showed in the beginning of the video in this range I actually have an exponential curve and as you can see the first one and second one and third one actually extremely magenta and this is not like a visual thing and now I understand it's actually how the wheels work inside the enlarger. So to be more precise in the corrections you need to think how the enlarger works. So you need to work starting from the 50 points and up. So from 50 to 100 we have more precision on the dust and below 50 is actually crazy exponential and hard corrections. I'm still not sure why it actually works like this and what is the reason. Maybe I'm a little bit wrong because I don't check the full mechanics how it works there. But I don't think it's actually translate from this kind of exponential circle which is pushing the lever directly with the distance of the scales. So I think I'm correct and I'm right. But probably in the future videos we will solve even in this problem. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to modify this enlarger. Maybe it's just better to fix a broken one and make new parts and fix the old one. And if you think about it long enough, it's much better to just switch to LEDs. And from LEDs you can directly change everything digitally. If you want exponential curve, fine. If you want a linear one, also fine. But in the same time, if you think about the new enlarger, it will be much better if you have a, this calibration sensor inside the enlarger. So with the one flip of the lever or even semi-transparent mirror, you can measure everything on the fly and a go and it will be amazingly cool technology to actually work with. It's only one problem with the market. I don't think you can find a market for this type of enlargers. So for now, I think it's less necessary and it's much better to repair stuff what we actually have in stock. So for this picture I also have a small defect on the sides and I think last pieces of the paper what I have they a little bit defective so I need to cut a new paper definitely and quite soon and just scrap this paper and cut it to the test strips. Once again everybody thank you for support of this channel. It will be more videos soon about the color calibrator and my darkroom and a lot of different stuff. 
at least now from a YouTube algorithm, I think after a thousand subscribers, it starts to doing something. At least I get more subscribers. So if you know somebody who will be interested in my channel, just share the content. And thank you for watching again. See you in the next videos.